So I had a question on my uh, channel in the comment section of a video I made on uh, making decals with GIMP. And uh, Wolfenstein asked me how to merge um, two textures together, for instance, add a snow effect to uh, any ground. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that in GIMP. So I'm going to open a new file in GIMP. OK. And open the two textures I want to merge. So I'm going to go into File, Open as Layers, and select the textures I want to merge. For instance, this one. It's a snow texture. And another one, a ground texture. And I'm going to choose this one. OK. So now that I have those two textures, in order to uh, make the ground appear beneath the, the snow, I'm going to right click on the snow layer and select Add Layer Mask and select black for full transparency and click add. So the snow has completely disappeared. If I chose the brush tool in the tools section and used white, select any brush. Now if I paint on it, the snow is going to appear where I'm putting strokes. Okay, but we are going to use an image as a mask. So I'm going to open a new image in this one, open. I'm going to rescale this uh, splatter so I'm going to layer, scale layer, and make it adapted to this image size. OK. And now I'm going to invert the color to make it white. So in colors, I'm just going to choose invert. Now it's white. And I'm going to make it a little blurry like so, or maybe a little bit more like this. OK. I'm going to select everything on this layer. Control C to copy, select the layer mask and paste on the layer mask. I'm going to hide this image. And as you can see now, the snow has appeared on my ground. If I want to apply this layer on the layer mask, I click the anchor and here it is. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to go back to this one, invert it again colors invert all right and i'm going to scale the layer let's say um, not much like so okay i'm going to move it beneath the snow and i have a little bit of uh, shadow OK, I can reduce its influence just by tweaking the opacity. And that looks pretty decent. OK. Now, let's go back and say I want to merge those two textures 
based on a random uh, pattern. That's usually what Grunge maps are made for. So I went to textures.com and in the Grunge section downloaded a Grunge map that I'm going to add to this project. So that's the Grunge map. The first step is going to scale it up to fit the image. So I'm going to layer, scale layer, and I know that my image is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. Okay. So I'm going to adjust uh, the levels to fit my needs. Remember, the white is going to be visible. That's where the snow is going to be. And the black is going to be completely transparent once I add a layer mask. So I'm going to use the color levels to reach the effect I want to achieve. Like so, for instance. So the snow is going to be where the white is. And click OK. I'm just going to make sure that this image is black and white by going to colors desaturate and color to gray okay and click okay now i'm going to select all to select this image go to the snow snow layer and add a layer mask a black one okay and press ctrl v and now if i hide my grunge map i can see that the snow appears. All right. But it looks weird, okay, because it lacks shadows. So to add shadows, we are going to add a layer underneath the snow between the ground here and the snow here, okay. And I'm going to right click on the layer mask and select mask to selection. Okay, now I'm going to click on the shadow layer. Let's name it shadow. Okay, and I'm going to click select and grow my selection by two pixels. Okay, so now the selection goes a little bit beyond the snow. So once I have this grown selection, I'm going to use the bucket fill tool and simply click to paint everything black. So now if I have a look, that's my shadow layer. Right, so I'm going to deselect everything. Okay, and as you can see, I now have shadows beneath the snow. I can reduce the opacity. All right, or I could also use a filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and increase the size like so to make the shadows bigger. And of course, reduce the opacity again until I reach the effect I want. And that should do it. So that's it, guys. I hope uh, this was useful for your project. And uh, of course, I can now uh, click on File, Export As, and save this image as PNG and use it in Blender. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.